Yeah, yeah this is a long one. Um, okay, yeah, and we have to be slow, I guess, with this one, okay. because it's quite complicated. Yeah. Okay. Question for NHS for lefties. Is it a widespread thing for slightly latent queer-tending hetero guys to have a learning relationship with a queer woman's emotional labour input and then default to their more familiar heteronormative relationship, saying it's how they see their long-term future? Context. I think the thing is going on with, het- with the hetero guy I've been seeing for six months. Like brackets default poly relationship the guy met someone he was interested in and once he'd had a couple of dates including sex he was besotted with her and felt a liberating rediscovery of his femme activated heterosexuality i feel like i read that in a sarcastic voice and i really didn't mean to um i'm neutral with me he's been really joyful about exploring a more queer way of being in relationships i'm a mask of center queer woman but has also had this debilitating insecurity about his hetero maleness including never being dom in bed despite having warned me up front on our third night together-ish that he was really dominant. Hearing you chat about this shit in your first session was what made me want to send this in for you. Now he wants to stop having sex with me because it's too confusing for him, but to keep all the emotional closeness and intimacy except sexual stuff. We have pre-acknowledged it's probably going to be awkward. So where's this boner going to go if we're ignoring it, spoons? So except the gender dynamic in the question, this is a run-of-the-mill relationship going from sexual to friendship scenario, with loads of communication throughout. It's not bad, just the bloke is getting a bit of a jammy deal right now. (laughs) So there's a lot to unpack here. Yes, okay, should we generalise the question a little bit, I suppose? Well, if if we even can. um, So I guess even the first question, I I think, really encapsulates a certain phenomena that I can openly say I have certainly met. In, or I have witnessed in the more radical left queer circles in London at least of a fairly heterosexual straight cis dude um, finding queerness for a little bit <laughs> trying it out with yeah a f- few queer people around and then sort of like realizing that that's not their thing and dropping it Happen- ha- happens with women as well to be fair yes. like, that's, yeah 100% yeah definitely but um, I mean maybe that's me I moved to Vienna, became a lesbian, moved back to London. It's like, whoops, men everywhere. Uh, no, <laughs> Maybe I'm a fraud. <laughs> no, but you... Be- okay, I'm not... Yeah, no, yeah, so we're going to go to my <laughs> issues. No, but basically, it's a thing. It's definitely happened. Yeah, it's like, you know, for a couple of, for a couple of months, like, especially sort of... I'm going to say it, fuck it, like, middle class men. <laughs> uh, sort of, it's a bit of a game for them for a couple of months, you know, be queer and dress up a little bit and they sort of, and it disappears. Sorry, I'm sounding harsh, but like, they have broken way too many of my like queer friends' hearts for me to just like, yeah, and yet, that's, this is not necessarily it. It's just that we're saying that this is, there is there is a phenomenon like that. The thing with this yeah. phenomenon, no, I'm just going to, I'm relating to what you just said, is that it's very, very difficult because on the one hand, I, for example, identified as queer long before I had, like, a lesbian experience, right? And there is this idea that unless you happen to be sleeping with someone of the same sex or gender as you, you, you're not queer, you're just faking it. And so we don't want to endorse the view that you need to, like, prove your queerness by... And yet... Sure. Hang on, I've got the and yet coming. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, I think in lefty spaces, there is a... This is, like, our, like, maybe bad politics bit, but there is definitely a pressure to not be a straight, middle-class dude. M- macho dude macho well, in dude. general. Yeah. And so, and it's a very easy way of making yourself not seem like a straight middle-class macho dude. You're social capital, for fuck's sake. So, yeah. And access to spaces. Access to and spaces. Respect. Yeah. Uh, trust. So we're not we're not saying this is the case with your no, well, okay, guy, but actually, it, it, it gave us both these kind of... Yes, he's sort of like a bit alarm, alarm. We'll get to the question eventually, but just to sort of like touch on this, because I don't know if we're going to get a question about this in general. And that's something I've been thinking about in, in general. Um, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why we're doing th- this show in a sense of like... Um, I understand, especially again, in sort of like radical subcultural left, uh, I guess we have spent a lot of our time at um, starting with the sort of like I guess the punk scene etc uh, you know the sort of the, the, the macho the macho dude has pretty sexist macho dude was always the sort of the archetype and the the kind of queer politics that we have seen in the last I suppose 
five to seven years have been a, a, a push against that, mm -hmm. uh, yes. a very very fucking needed push. Yes, and we're fantastic. About yeah, that for sure, for sure, and like definitely uh, have like muddle the waters in the best possible way. Yeah, the increased presence of queer, femme, like, 100%. trans people yeah, in the yeah, scene yeah, yeah, yeah. is, like, a welcome fucking antidote. Yes, 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 that's 100%. Uh, I, I, I will say that I think this has made a few perfectly decent, lovely, macho-looking, but not macho on the inside dudes that, that I know feel quite un unwelcome. Um, um, whereas some of the queer aesthetic folk can be some of the most dominant, controlling, manipulative, flipping, twisted little fucks out there, actually. So there was that, yeah, there was a bit of confusion. I think it's all actually water under the bridge. I think it's all kind of changing now. That seems I think to we're be becoming less... a bit more, in, um, there is a much more mature understanding of, of like, um, of what's going on there. It's all on the inside. Performative <laughs> politics and, yes. like, the pressure to, like, have an edgy identity is definitely less than it was a few years ago. Wow, you can tell we're on the second drink. We're already using <laughs> No, because of the, what's I great is that really, like I can't wait to be deleted out of the scene after we press stop. Rock. No, but but the point the point is that like <laughs> there have always like we want the left to be a place for people to explore their sexual identities, of course, and like their gender identities and their aesthetic identities and all of this stuff. But to use queerness as an excuse for being a bit of an asshole. We're not. We're not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. <laughs> no. Just like shockingly, there's just there's doing this and there's not doing this. So yeah. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So should we should we get back to the question? Yes. Okay. So that was our mini having rant. said all of this, um, we're not. Um, are we implying? We're a little we, bit implied. We're, we're wondering. We're, we're wondering yeah, we're if wondering. that could possibly be the case with your it got his like cake and eat that it as guy. Well, though, like yeah, your last line that. sounds like yeah, he is he is in a jammy situation. Yeah, and in the first one as well, mm. you're like there, it, there is a phenomenon of that happening, you know. So I mean, I don't know. I'd say run, but I'm a bit harsh. Like but the other that, thing is the poly politics, short. right? Like which is. A different but thing that's an element of it. No, no sex now. Well, I guess, I guess, but that's the thing. It's like now you have to just like get over this person because they're not going to be wanting to be intimate with you. And that's so difficult, especially when you're so close to them that you're cuddling and you're feeling them, their bits, etc. But like, was it a mutual so agreement? Like, it's not clear whether that was a mutual agreement that you, the questioner, was happy with or you've accepted yeah. and you're not happy with. Because yeah. obviously, not accepting true. a sexual slash not sexual situation that you're not happy with is not okay yeah that like, regardless on, on don't like, do that if you can or you're queer regardless of all and i that. get that you might feel like because you don't want to lose this connection that you that you have to do that but like if this isn't a situation that you're also equally ha basically there's two different things going on here yeah i think so okay so on the one hand there's your relationship with him that may or may not be as you want it maybe you also want a more more like cuddly but less sexual relationship in which case great the other thing is that you seem to imply that he's got quite a good situation going on and you're suspect of his his relationship with the poly and the queerness because of this new relationship he has with, with this new woman and that's a different issue for you to be working with like one is like am i happy with my relationship with him with exactly. the non-sex but am i also am i okay with him dating this girl in this very heteronormative way it's yeah. okay if you're not like i know we're all poly and we're all meant to be like okay with everything but also it's fucking okay to not be okay with yeah. a, a manifestation of your poly relationship just because you're poly doesn't mean you have to be okay with every form his relationship is taking particularly if it makes you feel like his character is changing or he's become disingenuous because of this because that's not about his other relationship that's not about petty jealousy that's about you seeing someone who you thought was x not being like that anymore and that can be like feel like a betrayal or feel like you don't know them yeah and your confidence drops as well yeah. and then like again it begins to create that loop you know when your confidence is low then that person you know perhaps you're not as fascinating to that person as well but also like yeah there are definitely two things going on here well actually even three things yeah there's the there, there's the the, the, the mesh of the queer identities there is the poly stuff but also in my career relationships one of the best things that uh, has been told to me uh, by what my partners was like mate like I don't care you know I don't care how many people you're so, you're with as such as long as you're not, not an asshole you're not an asshole to me you know and, and, and really that's sort of what it boils down to like it doesn't matter who you're with, uh, well, obviously there's communication with that and within that and all that stuff. But as long as you're being fulfilled and encouraged by that relationship, then like who cares? Yeah. And I think that's exactly what we need to ask here. You know, whether you feel enough reassurance 
But now that the sexual part is gone as well, I guess that's. Well, just I think because what's thing. happened is that your relationship with him has changed because of his relationship with her, or at least in conjunction yeah. with that, and that's that's not good poly politics, really. No. Like, and it seems like it is also ha- well, again, it does have that added uh, queer, um, I guess, layer to it as to like, oh, I'm actually now more interested in the straight. Things? And if that's true of him, and he wants this heteronormative relationship, and that's all he wants, then he needs to own up and fucking break up with you. I, I'm sorry, that sounds really harsh, but like, if he's if he's not actually, you know, like well, whatever, as long as yeah, as long. But the thing is, just like if if they were making you feel confident and happy, I guess you wouldn't be asking us the question, right? I think you know exactly what to do, and it's really break and. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We've all been the one to cling on to a relationship that's going downhill. Yeah, like, I'm like I'm like <laughs> <laughs> Some oh, might even be doing that today. Oh. <laughs> no, but I did that for a year and a half and it was the worst thing and ended up ruining my life like in a massive way so that I had to leave the country. Shout out if you're listening. Yeah, and I cry <laughs> every day and I write and it's bad and it's terrible. Yeah. Like, we're not like the sort of like because again, sometimes you read those like agony and questions now that I learned this term, I didn't know what it was yeah. before. You actually told me, uh, you know, oh, you know, uh, just break up with the person. They're not good for you. They're toxic for you. But it's, it's as if it's that easy. Yeah, it's No, not. you're going to go on a, on a bender for a good couple of weeks. You're going to cry and yeah. listen to all of your depressing songs. Your friends are going to be sick of you. <laughs> and I don't know, you're going to think all the darkest things. Or all the darkest things. Having said all this, I have a practical advice here. Actually, Ooh. something that we do that sometimes. No, 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 no. But this is something that has actually worked for me in the past, and um, I've, I've been using this quite a bit. And it's actually quite wonderful. I, I can't say that it helps 100%, but at least a bit of a fix for a couple of weeks. Get a piece of paper and write down 21 reasons why you dislike this person or why what why they annoy you not necessarily situations they could be situations but mostly it's better if they're actual like actual quality traits could be aesthetic things fully as well or like the way they laugh or yeah, the way yeah. they eat yeah yeah apples yeah yeah the way that they treat that friend oh God, yeah, i could do something. that to anyone though good <laughs> no but this is good like it really it sort of juggles your, mem- your memory because the thing with the relationships that we always remember the good parts right and the fun parts and how they made us feel in the good sense right and whereas actually yeah it's really important to know and remember that actually the you know that the, these people are not perfect at all, and that we romanticize them, and 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 and, and, and I think yeah, twenty one reasons why mm. they're actually not that great, or why you hate them even. Um, that has helped me in the past, yeah. and then I just sort of carry that around with me, and uh, for a little bit, for as long as I need to. I always, I also have the strip rule yeah. as well. That I've had that. That I basically I, I put a strip. Oh, on it's my gone. Hand. It's not gone. Not psychologically. Okay, good. <laughs> no, it just I had a shower. So okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just like. Don't don't contact that person. Just just don't. Yeah, and then you basically you keep the strip on for as long as you have to. But basically, it's up to you whether you want to. It sounds like because of various things, including this new relationship, you are not feeling that good about yourself and your queerness and your aesthetic, even maybe, and like as like a more mask person compared to this new person, and also not about your relationship with him. And I just think, yeah, you need to think about, like, it's also, like, honestly, it's also okay if you just want to stay with it because you like him and you oh, can't yeah. deal with it right now. Yeah. Like, Been there you well. know what? Yeah, like, <laughs> a cuddle with someone I like a few times a week is sometimes better than being alone. Like, even if it's not ideal. Like, yeah. don't beat yourself up for picking whichever one you pick. But I just really don't want you to feel bad or, like, you're comparing your relationship with him to his relationship with her or your queer aesthetic and identity with like his new like, thing like, like ideal yeah or, exactly oh, yeah. like because that's shit and you just shouldn't have to do that like yeah so i just i don't know i be yeah, many options i suppose i'd yeah. like to think we've given like quite a few practical but tips i just really feel you and i like wish you a lot of luck because that sounds like a really really tricky situation and i've had my fair share of poly trauma and queer trauma and relationships falling apart trauma like and I 
I hope we've been helpful. If we haven't, please send us another question or some follow-up feedback. Yeah, like, for sure. But it, again, I guess it's also easy for us to, to sort of demonize this 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 dude. Or yeah, whatnot, he's also know? possibly confused and like yeah. we're maybe like making it out like he's not queer and he maybe, maybe he actually yeah. is and he's or just he's like manipulative or whatnot. That's also and also it's yeah. okay to be a queer man and and fancy a like straight looking woman yeah, like that is yeah, also yeah, actually yeah. completely fine it's like everything is fine he's great actually <laughs> yeah well, we're huge fans of him <laughs> he's our favorite no but basically but, i understand yeah. why you would be making excuses for him and like in in general just sort of like what if he is the best thing that's yeah. happened for a long time you know can't just say no to that especially since i have this like whole like yolo rule like right where it's just like if there's a connection that you have with someone it's fucking dumb to just drop it because life is too yeah. short and we should be with people that we like um, and also like i'm fi- I'm thinking about my ex-boyfriend who i was with for three years and he was queer and he always had a lot of trouble with because he mostly dated women because he found women mostly better to get along with and less likely to be assholes shocking i know that that he felt like his queer identity was like i'm speaking for him maybe he doesn't feel like this at all but i think that part of it was like he felt like his queer queerness was somewhat erased or not taken seriously because he was normally dating women oh yeah 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 you know that's the thing yeah and so there's also that like we don't want to make it seem like he's not really queer unless you think that he's not really queer. We don't want to make it seem like he's like deliberately being an asshole unless you think he's deliberately being an asshole. Like, basically, we're, we're yeah. Yeah. No, but I think this is good. Like, I mean, okay, I'm just making <laughs> I think it's great. I think we're great. No, but basically, I think, again, everything that we just said, whether like just as much as it's contradicting, Every, every sentence contradicting each other. I think you probably thought all of this. Mm. You've probably all thought all of this. You you thought the worst, and then you made excuses for him, and and yeah. And, and and yeah, that's exactly what we're doing for you because yeah, we've probably been there. So again, this is also a way for us to um, yeah demystify these sort of situations and yeah. say that this happens in 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 our relationship lives. Like I'm actually amazed that we're we're you know we're, we've got our day jobs that we're trying to do activism and all that stuff and also we're holding all these relationship dramas that no one ever even knows about actually yeah, On yeah top of it everyone all, you know? has yeah. like the personal like emotional trauma going on in the background all all yeah, the fucking all time, the fucking time. Yeah. and like thank you for like opening and sharing yeah. yours with us because yeah. it was like a really nice question and I hope that something we said was useful or hit home. Please just let us know. And 